Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Tuesday, August 4th, 2020. I am Dave Biddle. I'm very happy to be joined by the Dean of Ohio State Football Recruiting, Bill Curlick. A lot to get into today, Bill. We might find out what the Big Ten football schedule looks like later today. It's not a for sure thing that's going to happen later today, but uh, we're definitely keeping a close eye on it. I know a lot of people want to know what the Big Ten schedule might look like. We don't have any hard and fast answers for you, but we can tell you what we're hearing from different sources. Bill, from everything you've gathered, when do you think is the most likely date for the Big Ten schedule to start, and what do you think the Big Ten schedule is going to look like? Well, the way it's going, I think I might be retired by the time it comes out. But uh, we've been waiting for this, it seems like, forever now. But uh, uh, you know, I don't know. I think that uh, uh, it's going to be sometime uh, today or tomorrow would be my best guess, so to speak. Um, and we just kind of keep on waiting. From what I've been told, you know, at one point I was told that uh, Ohio State would be having their first game on September 5th. We've had that out there. Um, since then, there's been a lot of things happen, though. There's, <laughs> there's been uh, some different things uh, done and said by the Big Ten, and so we don't know for sure. But my latest uh, that I'm told is that uh, – the best guess is that Ohio State's first game will still be September 5th, and we'll find that out uh, in the next few days here. Uh, we'll see if that holds up. Again, there's been a lot of things happen, and now, now we've got the Rutgers situation. So, so who knows for sure. But um, let's hope that we all find out today or tomorrow, and let's hope that uh, the Buckeyes are playing in, in early September. Yeah, Rutgers had some positive tests again uh, for the second time. And Northwestern had some positive tests that they uh, announced yesterday. So, yeah, I think from what I'm hearing, the new Big Ten commissioner, Kevin Warren, it's kind of weird that Jim Delaney's not the Big Ten commissioner anymore, but Kevin Warren, I'm hearing he might be a little more conservative than some of the other ADs as far as this matter goes. Like, for example, I'm hearing Gene Smith is ready, like, hey, let's get this going. Kevin Warren's taking a more cautious approach. I think that could be part of the holdup here. Again, this is just speculation from what I'm hearing, but that would make sense that you have some ADs that are like, hey, let's get this going. We're supposed to start this Friday with camp. For those who don't know, practice is supposed to start this Friday. And like Bill said, you know, a lot of Ohio State's players are being told, get ready for September 5th. Don't think it's going to be September 26th for the first game. It's, it could be September 5th. So, But, Bill, that's one thing I've heard. I don't know if you've heard that at all, but the new Big Ten commissioner and some of the ADs might not be seeing eye-to-eye on this issue. And that's not a big surprise. This is a complicated issue. But that's one thing I've heard, Bill, is that Kevin Warren and some of the ADs might not be on the same page here. Yeah, and, and that's understandable. You know, that you've got so many different feelings and thoughts on this that uh, not everybody's going to agree. And the bottom line is that the Big Ten commissioner, you know, he's going to have to make that decision. And, and hopefully it, it comes down today or tomorrow. Yeah, let's hope. Let's hope it comes down today because I'd love to see the, It's going to be a lot of fun seeing that schedule when it comes out. Big Ten only games, probably 10 games with two or three bye weeks mixed in just so they can move things around if they need to. Because there's going to be positive tests. We're seeing it in Major League Baseball. We're seeing it in college football, the NFL. There's just, you know, it's just going to be something if we're going to have sports that, you know, you're going to have to live with and play through, and there's going to be some risks. And, you know, as the great Gordon Gee said, you can't shut the whole thing down just because one or two guys or a few guys get it. Um, we just got to hope there's not a massive outbreak. All right, let's get into some recruiting. Obviously, Gabe Powers committed to the Buckeyes over the weekend. You had that story. You were all over it. He's the number one player in the state of Ohio for the 2022 class. We talked about him on yesterday's show. You know, talk a little bit more about Gabe Powers. And also, Bill, he leads the charge for the Ohio 2022 class. How – does that Ohio 22 class kind of stand up to some of the other Ohio classes in recent memory? Is this considered a strong class for Ohio standards in 2022 led by Powers? And is it considered maybe average? I think it's a good class. I, I think I like the 2021 Ohio class a little better right now, uh, but it's still so early for 2022. Um, having said that, you know, Ohio State's off to a great start there. They've got the number one player in that class. Gabe Powers, just a tremendous prospect. You know, I, I think he has a tremendous future ahead of him at Ohio State. I think he's going to be a great outside linebacker for the Buckeyes. Um, you know, they, they've got uh, uh, Jair Brown, cornerback, uh, who is now an Ohioan as committed. They've got Tegra Shavola, and then they've got C.J. Hicks. So, um, out of uh, the top, my personal top five kids in Ohio. 
for the class of 2022. Heisen's already got commitments from four of them. The other kid that I really, really like is Blake Miller from Strongsville, who they've offered an offensive lineman, 6'6", 315 pounds, and he's just going into his junior season. I think he's going to be a great college player, and I think – uh, Ohio State has a great chance to land him. I think ultimately his decision will come down to Ohio State, Michigan, or maybe Clemson. Um, but I think uh, ultimately I really like the Buckeyes' chances. So, you know, that would be a clean sweep of the top five guys uh, in the Buckeye State for 2022 by Ryan Day. And Ryan Day, when he came on board, you know, one of his first things he said was to lock down the state of Ohio uh, when it comes to recruiting. And he's pretty much done that. Um, but to, to get back to the, the how strong the class is, I think it's a good class. I don't think it's a spectacular class overall. I don't know that um, the depth right now for 2022 is quite as good as in some years, but I think it's pretty darn good at the top, you know, as we talked about, led by Gabe Powers and, and then those other guys that we've talked about. I think it's a good class. Yeah, I love the way Ryan Day is recruiting. It's like he's taken the best of Jim Trussell and the best of Urban Meyer and infused them. And I am all the way here for that. I love it. He locks down Ohio, and he still is recruiting great nationally. Speaking of which, let's stay in the 2022 class and talk about some national recruits they're in on. As you reported yesterday, Bill, the Buckeyes have offered the number one athlete in the country in the 2022 class, young man out of New Jersey named Keon Sab. Tell the listeners about Keon Sab and if you think uh, the Buckeyes have a good chance of pulling the number one player out of New Jersey – all the way to Columbus? Well, I think they have a chance. And that's all at this point you can ask for for, a kid that's, uh, for an out-of-state kid. And I talked to Keon last night. Um, he was offered by the Buckeyes yesterday and uh, uh, was offered on a call um, with Matt Barnes, a high state safety coach. A high state has offered Keon Sapp as a safety. He's the country's number one class of 2022 athlete. You know, great size for a safety kind of prototype size really for safety six foot three 195 pounds and uh um has a great list of scholarship offers that includes uh not only ohio state but clemson uh, as well as florida uh, georgia michigan uh, oklahoma penn state you know just a great list of early offers he is going to visit ohio state he tells me we'd like to do that as soon as possible we all hope that visits uh, are opened up uh, soon. Obviously, the dead period is still extended until the end of this month, but we'll see what happens after that. Says he wants to get to Ohio State uh, as soon as he can after the dead period, um, after things have opened up. So Ohio State definitely has a chance there. Um, he's impressed with uh, Ohio State's ability to develop players and get them to the next level, that being the league, the NFL. So, so he's a guy certainly that Ohio State is in the running for. Another 2022 athlete I want to ask you about. I love this kid, Deson McCullough, the son of Dylan McCullough, who was a star running back at Miami University, the Red Hawks, and that might have been the Redskins back when he played, but uh, the Miami Red Hawks, and now he's the running backs coach of the Kansas City Chiefs. There was a great E60 story about Dylan McCullough um, meeting his father who they actually had a relationship. If no one's seen that, just do a Google search for Dylan McCullough and meeting his father in E60 is a great, I don't want to do any spoilers. It is a great show. But anyway, Deshaun McCullough or Deson McCullough is Dylan's son. He is the number seven athlete in the country, number 70 overall player in the country, and the number one player out of the state of Kansas, that hotbed of uh, recruiting that Kansas is. But again, his dad's the running backs coach for the world champion Chiefs. Sounds really good for the Buckeyes to land McCullough. What are you hearing about that, Bill? First of all, uh, Desan McCullough, just I love that kid, both as a player and the kind of young man he is. You know, you talk to that kid and he is mature, you know, beyond his years. Uh, it, you know, you talk to him, it's, it's almost like talking to a 30-year-old man. He's just a very mature young man and a uh, uh, great, great player. You know, he goes about six, four and a half and uh, close to 220 pounds. Uh, being recruited as an outside linebacker, kind of a hybrid outside linebacker, could rush the passer, could drop into coverage. And if that sounds like uh, one, 
Uh, you might be thinking of Isaiah Simmons. And that's kind of who he gets compared to some. Um, but Ohio State's recruiting him as an outside linebacker, hybrid. Uh, and he's got family in Ohio. He has family. He's had family in Cincinnati, uh, Youngstown. Uh, he's very impressed with Ohio State. Uh, really, he just wants to get out here and visit. And again, it would help things so much if uh, visits are allowed again. And uh, sooner or later, they I think they've got to be allowed because the kids that are uh, 2021 kids, um, they need to be able to visit colleges to make their decisions. And uh, Desan will visit Ohio State. In fact, he's told me that uh, one of the first, if not the first visit he plans to make once visits are opened up is to Ohio State. And it wouldn't shock me one bit if uh, when he makes that visit, if he would go ahead and commit. I'm not calling for that to happen at this point because he hasn't even uh, got the visit set yet. He can't set it yet until he knows when visits are going to be allowed again. But when he gets on campus, you know, I think they're going to make a strong pitch to land a commitment from him. And, and right now I like where Ohio State stands with him. You know, he's got a great list of offers too. You know, he, he dropped a top 10 um, earlier this summer. High State obviously, as everyone knew, was going to be on that. And right now, I think Ohio State is in a good position with this on McCullough. Yeah, that's going to be really cool if he plays in the same state that his father played in um, for his college football. And, yeah, as you mentioned, he's his father originally from Youngstown. Jim Trestle was the head coach at Youngstown State at the time and said, man, we really, really wanted to get D. Lynn McCullough. But we were only one double A, and he wanted to go Division One and went to Miami University. But, uh, again, a great story there with uh, D. Lynn McCullough. So I, I, I invite everybody to check that out. It's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I know I'm going on and on about it. But once you see it, you'll realize why. E60. D. Lynn McCullough, look it up. All right, last thing. I want to get into Ohio high school football, just high school football in general. You know, there's still some you know, debate if it's going to happen. Right now, high school football is on in Ohio, so that's good news. We know Virginia has called off a high, uh, high school football, which obviously – um, impacts Travion Henderson, the number one running back in the country. He's not going to have a senior season. Bill, you talked to a lot of high school coaches. Um, are they optimistic that there's going to be a you – know, let's keep it to Ohio right now, or you can mention other states as well. Are most coaches that you talk to, are they optimistic that we're going to have a high school football season? Because it's right around the corner. Well, they're all preparing for it to happen. I think they should because right now it is on. Um, will it happen? You know, they don't know. And they will tell you they don't know for sure at this point. But they're preparing for it to happen, um, maybe under different circumstances. For instance, there are some um, conferences that have, have already gone to a conference-only schedule that, uh, with a slightly delayed start. Uh, there are some that uh, uh, feel like it's going to go off and, and going to happen and, and, and they will get all of the game, um, planned in. We'll see. I can tell you that they all tell you that they are taking as many precautions as they can. They're handling this situation, um, you know, the best that they can in the circumstances. And the interesting thing is, is that um, uh, as I talk to them, uh, you really don't hear about uh, any of their players having the virus. You know, I'll ask a, a coach or I'll ask a player on a high school team, do any of your teammates have the virus? And, and pretty much the, the standard answer is no. And it shows me that they are taking precautions, I guess. Uh, and, and they really are hoping and intent on having a season. If I had to predict right now, I would go with the prediction uh, that there will be high school football games played in Ohio, um, you know, come September. You know, we'll see what happens, but I, I would go with that prediction. And I think most high school coaches would tell you that it's 50-50 uh, or better uh, that there will be a season. And last thing here. If there's, I'm just, this is just going to be your opinion. I mean, I think you're probably would have the best opinion of anybody that you could possibly ask this question to as much as you've covered recruiting. You were also a former coach yourself in high school. Um, if there is no high school football this year, now ho heaven forbid there wouldn't be high school football, but if there's no high school football this year, how much is that going to affect some recruits? Maybe, you know, a, a late rising 2021 kid who coaches were interested in, but they wanted to see his senior film or a 2022 kid who, you know, didn't play as a sophomore because it's hard to play a lot as a varsity. If you're, if you're on a really good high school team, it's not easy to play as a sophomore. How, if we don't have high school football, in your opinion, how much is that going to affect these kids? It's going to make it harder for them, certainly. Um, you know, you, you can look at guys that uh, right now, 
Tay roster that developed a, a little bit later. Thayer Mumford, for instance, um, yeah, he developed a little bit later. He he got himself in great shape um, and, and a little bit later in his high school career and lost some weight and just really matured and developed and 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 uh, you know now you see that High State's got a guy that's. that's going to play in the NFL. So um, kids develop at different stages at different ages. And if they take away this season, if this season doesn't happen, it's going to take away um, some opportunities for high school kids to earn scholarship offers. And, and it will also affect and impact the class of 2022. You know, there are a number of kids out there that Ohio State is waiting to see um, this season uh, as to whether they're going to offer them a scholarship you know, they, those kids didn't get a chance to earn scholarships during the camps this summer. They couldn't go to the Ohio State camp this summer and earn a scholarship. So Ohio State has told them they're going to look at the, uh, how they do early in this season, providing there is a season, and decide will a scholarship offer be extended at that point. So, uh, you know, it really impacts a lot of kids at a lot of levels. And, um, Obviously, we all want to see high school sports, and certainly the high school kids want to play high school football. No doubt about it. Let's just hope we have uh, high school football, and let's hope we have middle school tennis this year, just to throw something that's very, 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 very personal to me in there. It looks like we will for now. Hey, great stuff from the dean of Ohio State football recruiting, Bill Curlick. And thank you to all the listeners out there for tuning into the show. I appreciate it. I hope everyone has a great day. Get those glow sticks out, kids. (laughs) 